from us will move us down to genes. So uh, you have heard this morning and now pres presentations from my colleagues about elements in that complex interplay between genes, environment, and development uh, that individually cause or are involved in the pathophysiology of uh, mental disorders. And I want to turn you back to basics, literally, to the molecular basis of uh, mental disorders in general and uh, bipolar disorder in particular. And uh, even before we were able to measure genetic variation across the genome, from family and twin studies, we know that uh, mental disorders are heritable and uh, they have quite a bit of heritability. So I don't have a pointer, so I'll just tell you the x-axis, I'll refer to x and y-axis. The x-axis x -axis here is the prevalence and here the y-axis is the heritability of a particular disorder. And this plots uh, mental disorders versus other common diseases. You can see that schizophrenia and bipolar, not much lower, have high heritability, meaning they are very heritable. So before we knew anything about the molecular pathophysiology or biology, we, had, we already knew that there's biological genetic components that contribute to disease. And what's really remarkable, uh, and um, Matt's, my friend Matt State told you about this in the morning, that you can, one can actually develop a, or calculate a genomic background risk, and that genomic background risk is calculated after um, uh, assessing gen genetic variation across the genome. So hundreds of thousands of genetic markers are uh, assessed and then put through a rigorous statistical analysis. And one can actually determine that there is something like a genomic background risk that predisposes one slightly towards, uh, in this case here, the example here, this was the original paper was on uh, schizophrenia and bipolar. So this predisposes one to schizophrenia, but also the same uh, combination of genetic variation also just predisposes you one to bipolar disorder and not to other common disorders. Uh, what's, remarkable about, what's remarkable about this, though it doesn't tell you anything about biology, but it does tell you that there's a genetic configuration that predisposes the brain to a disorder. And when, when one dissects this further, you can actually show that, uh, you know, if you pull this out into deciles, that the more of those markers you have, the higher one's risk is for uh, a particular disease. Uh, this has been done, shown beautifully for schizophrenia, the sample sizes, and I'll refer to sample size again for bipolar is lower, so it hasn't worked as uh, well yet for bipolar, but it probably will. And then what happens, so none of these uh, markers that we used for the uh, genomic background risk was done in the traditional uh, case control study where one actually uh, uh, does, a, does a case control study to see uh, if there are markers that can be identified that confer larger risk increases. And by the way, uh, risk increase, genetic risk increase for mental disorders, including bipolar, is uh, conferred across what we call the allelic spectrum from very rare disorders where uh, evolution did not have a lot of time uh, to put selective pressure on. Uh, to uh, common variation with low in risk increases where evolution has been working, selection has been working on for a while, uh, many generations. So this uh, slide, uh, the graph on, the, on your left, shows what happens if uh, one does this case control study uh, across several disorders. In this case, uh, this is early work from the PGC, from the Psychiatric Genomics Consortium. And even here, once one can show that there is molecular overlap between disorders. And that's a theme that uh, I will, I'll come back to. I, I know 
who do you want me to talk to focus on bipolar disorder, but there's so much molecular overlap that one cannot talk without the other about the genetic architecture of the disease. And the slide on the, uh, the, uh, the graph on the top right sort of shows that if you take a bipolar genomic background risk, you can actually predict uh, subphenotypes of, of schizophrenia. So very interesting uh, cross-disease uh, associations between these disorders. And again, schizophrenia, this is the famous Manhattan plot where the x-axis uh, denotes the chromosome and the y-axis the level of significance. I best showed this uh, slide uh, in the morning. Uh, and as you will remember, that we have a large skyscraper there is chromosome 6, the MHG region. And to best, both what Beth and Matt were saying, so currently the uh, number of uh, cause, the number of statistically associated, not statistically associated variation uh, signals is uh, 250. So these are unpublished data. This is not shown here, but the Psychiatric Genomics Consortium is continuing to, <coughs> excuse me, to add samples and data. And uh, 250 plus loci have been identified that are associated with schizophrenia. And you'll ask, where is bipolar? Here is bipolar. This is uh, from a paper that's currently BioX archive. Uh, the schizophrenia uh, genome wide association study has n studies have not been as successful as schizophrenia. Why is that? You may ask. Currently, there are about 30 loci. Uh, it's a function again of sample size. It's probably also the uh, heterogeneity of these disorders. Of, of bipolar itself, the phenotype. Actually, it, it can be shown now, it's a very interesting finding, that one can unpack the, uh, gen uh, the genetic architecture of bipolar by subdividing into subtypes of bipolar with and without depression to get additional uh, uh, significant genetic signals. Um, so what, will, what can tell us all that about biology, you will ask, and that's a good question, right? The first findings, significant findings of bipolar many years ago. I think this was then seven significant uh, loci. Uh, uh, calcium ion ch channels uh, were associated uh, with the biology. And uh, again, this is from uh, work from the pathway uh, group from the PGC, the Psychiatric Genomics Consortium, where they analyzed schizophrenia, pathways, significant pathways for schizophrenia, bipolar, and, uh, and, and major depression, and of 50 implicated pathways. These are the three that consistently come up uh, with the most uh, uh, support, which is synaptic genes, uh, immune genes, and epigenetic, methylation epigenetic genes, uh, sort of, that could provide a, a hint at the gene and environment, a potential gene environment connection uh, with bipolar. And I leave you with my uh, cut to the elder slide that I always include uh, in these presentations to just remind everyone and myself the complexity and the challenge that we, that we uh, are asked to solve when we're talking about the genetic architecture. So we are talking about germline mutations that somehow across development and across the complexities of the, of the brain architecture, uh, you know, cellular phenotypes, uh, phenotypes within molecular scale, scale cellular phenotypes within uh, the complexities and the hierarchies of the brain, some cause behavior. And I think this is the big and un currently unsolved question uh, in neuropsychiatry and, the, and uh, and end with that. Thank you. Thank you.